Good morning, and coming up, we'll be tracking this dangerous storm on the move headed for the northeast this morning after bringing heavy snow and treacherous conditions to the Midwest. And the latest on, you'll remember this story, the Rust shooting investigation. A New Mexico prosecutor is set to announce this morning whether Alec Baldwin or anyone else will face charges. Dan Abrams has what to expect. Plus, the last of our Kid Creator series, a 10-year-old making the world a sweeter place. That's coming up right here on GMA. We'll see you in a second. And coming up on GMSA, lots of people use apps like Venmo and Zelle, but what can you do to help make sure your money is safe? That's ahead on GMSA at 6. And checking TransKai, the flow is a go at 37 and Fair Avenue. We'll talk to Stephen coming up. I have this hour, a violent scene in front of a far west side apartment complex that turned deadly. We'll have everything we know so far coming up. New allegations against embattled New York Republican Congressman George Santos. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. That plus what Republican leadership in the House is choosing to do about it coming up. And let's take a look out there with live cam. It feels like January again. Grab that jacket. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Hope you slept well last night. It is Thursday, the 19th of January. Thanks for joining us. The week is going by pretty fast, and this morning you'll need to muddle up a little bit at least. They told us it'd be cooler starting this morning, and it is. Mike Ostrage is back in another one of those situations where it's cool here and then out in the hill country, cold. It's, it's downright cold. As a matter of fact, uh, just some of the latest numbers probably got some freezing temperatures mm -hmm. in some of the outlying areas up in the hill country. And we're not done cooling off yet because we still, I mean, the sun's not going to be coming up for another hour and a half, and then it takes a little bit after that to really start to warm up. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. We got very still air, hardly any breeze, dry air. And so that's what's allowing these temperatures to drop down. So we've dropped another three degrees here in town, 47, 45s, both at Randolph as well as Port SA. And uh, same thing in New Braunfels, 38 in Kerrville. And so in some of the outlying areas, you may be even a little bit uh, colder than that. Like I said, maybe dipping down close to freezing and will continue to drop down for the next couple of hours. Mountain Cedar went up yesterday, as did multiple Old. Now it's going to be interesting because this reading was taken right about as the, the front was moving on through here just before it. So it's going to be interesting after we had the windy conditions all day yesterday to see what today's updated count is going to be. And that comes out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. So I think bottom out at 44 this morning. Wind is going to be out of the northwest today. Hardly any breeze right now. It'll pick up a little bit of a breeze out there. Going to have lots of sunshine, maybe a few high clouds sliding in later on today. 66 at noon and then a high temperature up to 72. So jacket this morning probably won't need it later on this afternoon. We are going to be on the warm side of things, almost 10 degrees above normal. But the nice thing with the overall forecast is that's the exception rather than the rule. Instead of having these temperatures mid and upper 70s and low 80s like we've been seeing most of January, we're going to be closer to January temperatures throughout at least the next seven days. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cabasos, what's going on out there? Well, things have been cruising along just fine over here, Mike. 281 at Sprucewood, but uh, let's get a quick look around town, see what you can expect if you plan to head out the door. US 90 at Couples, it's typically a busy shot around this hour. We are seeing more, more traffic in both the east and westbound lanes there 281 at San Pedro not too bad in the north and southbound lanes but 1604 at uh, there Petrenko you could see that it's just quiet but it does look like we still have some problems out there along US 90 a stalled vehicle we'll find out what's going on there but uh, here on the map it's just been a lot of green out there quiet roadways and of course, still plenty of construction. But if you plan on traveling into San Antonio this early in the morning, things are still pretty much trending the same way. 37 northbound. It looks to be about 28 minutes. So pleasant drive if you're traveling in from Pleasanton. For friends that are still traveling in from Castroville on long US 90 in the eastbound lanes, it should be about the typical drive time despite that stalled vehicle. But we'll keep a close eye on it. And for our friends that are traveling in from 35 uh, northbound from Lytle, your arrival to the Alamo City should be in about 16 minutes or so. But back here in Transguide 35 north at Loop 410. And again, things have been moving along just fine for the most part, but it, it, we are getting closer to morning rush, so we'll keep a close eye on things and have updates throughout the morning. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. Developing now, homicide investigators are looking into a double murder case in far west Bear County. The victims are two men who were shot just outside an apartment complex on a street called Mansions Bluff. That's near Highway 90 and Highway 211. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, do detectives have any leads so far? 
Well, I spoke with them a while ago, and as far as we know, they do not have a whole lot of information. They do believe that there were four people here originally, with two of them being shot and killed. Now, this happened about 2 o'clock this morning. Right now, we have homicide investigators here, along with staff members from the medical examiner's office. But let me get you that video so you can see exactly what has been going on. They've been working in the area just outside the gates of the villages of Briggs Ranch Apartments here. Uh, this is where the shootings apparently happened. Now, investigators tell us that they had reports of some loud arguing just before the gunshots rang out right around 2 o'clock this morning. And when deputies got here, they did find the two men dead on the ground just outside the apartment complex. But no one else was here. So they're still trying to develop leads and see who exactly was a party to this argument, which led to the shooting, trying to figure out who exactly the shooter was. Reporting live in far west Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, a scary scene on the city's south side. This after two teenage boys were shot while they were walking along the road. It happened just after 2.30 this morning, and police tell us that the two teens were on South Zarzamora near Walton Avenue when someone pulled up in a vehicle and started shooting. One was hit in the finger and the other teen was hit in the foot. They were both taken to the hospital and were told they were not cooperating with police. Another possible delay in the murder trial against Air Force Major Andre McDonald. His legal team now wants a judge to throw out some key pieces of evidence before trial starts. McDonald accused of murdering his wife, Andre, nearly four years ago. One of the victim's friends remembers finding blood and some hair on a light switch when she went looking for Andre at her home. The defense claims that friend trespassed onto the property, so her testimony should be thrown out. They're also questioning search warrants and cell phone data in the case. Prosecutors argue Andreen's mother did live at the home and she gave investigators permission to enter the home and process the scene. It's now up to a judge to decide what evidence will be allowed at trial. Despite all this, a jury is scheduled to hear opening statements on Monday. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy is accused of tasing one cadet and threatening another. This is an image just into our newsroom of 23-year-old Andrew Garcia. He's facing four charges, including official oppression. Now, one cadet says they were tased back in December. Another says they felt in danger during their shift. And now after an investigation, the sheriff's office wants to terminate Garcia. Right now to 606, New York Congressman George Santos, who has faced calls to resign for lying about details on his resume, is facing new allegations about more lies. This as Republican leaders in the House of Santos will remain in their ranks. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the very latest. Good morning. Republican leadership choosing not to publicly punish Santos, even putting him on two congressional committees, all while new allegations against the embattled New York Republican come to light. This morning, new questions swirling again around the background of Congressman George Santos. On a podcast in 2021, Santos said his mother's death was linked to debris from ground zero. My mom was a 9-11 survivor. Mm. She was in the South Tower um, and she made it out. She got caught up in the ash cloud. My mom fought cancer till her death. But immigration documents obtained by Alex Calzera through a Freedom of Information Act request and provided to ABC News suggest Santos's mother wasn't even in the United States on that day. The freshman congressman also under fire for allegations that he has ties to a Ponzi scheme in Florida, faces charges of check fraud in Brazil, and even allegedly used a different name to set up a GoFundMe to raise $3,000 for a veteran's dying dog and then never handed over the money. I took his help and needed it. I needed that dog to survive. Santos has denied those allegations, telling reporters he has no clue who this is and broadly insisting he's done nothing unethical. There are a growing number of House Republicans calling for Santos to resign, but House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has signaled he wants to handle this issue internally and wait for the results of an ethics committee investigation. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. In some other morning headlines, the $31.4 trillion U.S. debt ceiling hovering over the nation's capital today. The debt limit established by Congress is the maximum amount the federal government can borrow to pay its bills. Once breached, the U.S. eventually will start to default on loans, possibly affecting Social Security payments, veterans' benefits, and federal employee pay. 
The Biden administration is calling on lawmakers to come up with a solution, but some Republicans say the White House should reduce its own spending. The Treasury Department can take measures to give Congress and the president until around June to come up with some sort of agreement. The jury in the second trial against alleged Oath Keepers will begin deliberations today after a month-long trial. Three members of the group and one associate are facing charges, including seditious conspiracy. All four have pleaded not guilty. They are trying to avoid the fate of other members of the Oath Keepers who were convicted on multiple charges in November. Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes and another member were found guilty of seditious conspiracy. Three other members were found guilty on other felony charges. And happening today, CPS Energy has several outages planned. It's all in an effort to improve the infrastructure in a quick growing community in northwest Bear County. The work will be taking place in the Cross Mountain community that is west of Leon Springs. A U.S. Census report shows it's grown three times faster than the city of San Antonio with about 80 homes added every year. CPS Energy plans to begin infrastructure work at around 9 a.m. today. Outages are expected to last through around 2 p.m. Also keep in mind there will be some lane closures near Cross Mountain Trail and Scenic Loop Road. All that to keep in mind out there in the Cross Mountain area of Northwest Bear County. Right now, 610, 50 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, some changes are coming to TikTok. We're going to tell you more about it. More layoffs for big tech companies. Why thousands are getting the pink slip over at Microsoft. And we're starting chilly this morning. 50 degrees, big difference from yesterday morning. Go ahead and grab that jacket and we'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 614 in your morning consumer news. More layoffs at tech companies. Microsoft now says it will eliminate around 10,000 positions worldwide by the end of March. That's about 5% of Microsoft's total workforce. The company is looking to trim costs over fears of a recession. TikTok is doing more to identify state-run media, the social media site labeling content from Russian-controlled outlets during the war in Ukraine. Now material from outlets in other countries will have labels as well. And it's National Popcorn Day. Woohoo! To celebrate, all Santico's theaters will be offering free popcorn when you buy a movie ticket. Now the offer is valid all day at any Santico's location, but there is a limit of three per customer. You can find a list of locations right now on our website at KSAP. Com. And remember, Steph's the gal that just goes to movie theater to buy popcorn and then she leaves. Then I didn't I even know that was a thing. <laughs> of course. But it makes sense. I yeah. mean, you know, why else would you go to a theater, Especially right? now when things are streaming. I did this years before streaming. Yeah, it's a, it's a great trend out You are there. way ahead of your time, Steph. I, I think so. All right, <laughs> well, that at least. Let's check in with uh, Stephen Cavazos. Uh, but you did start a trend because now that's what I will do. There I do. you go. I'll go <laughs> grab a, a bag of popcorn, a, a large soda, and a hot dog. And... Just go watch uh, whatever's on, uh, whatever's streaming. So, right. hey, uh, hey, let's get a quick look here along US 90 at uh, Mideo Creek. You can see that we have a stalled truck out there. By the looks of this, it uh, could be in the eastbound lanes, closer into, closer into 410. Remember, it's also the same spot where we had a stalled vehicle earlier, a stalled trailer, I should say, that was causing a little bit of a backup. You can see, though, uh, traffic's moving along without any trouble, but you have to watch out because those emergency lights are on for a reason. Check your vehicles before you get out on the roadways. Now, wide look at the map. It is the same story here, guys. Just a lot of green and, of course, plenty of construction spots. But uh, we'll give that a break for now. We want to get to some gas prices here for you. And these are today's gas prices according to AAA. Now, right here in Bear County, uh, they're reporting the average gas price is about $2.97. Now, around the state, AAA actually reports that Texas was one of 10 states that saw a pretty big increase in uh, the gas price there. We're looking at $2.98. So that's more than 10 cents than what we saw last week. And around the country, that same trend does continue $3.37. That's more than 20 cents than a month ago, according to AAA. So um, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but one of my least favorite things to do is go pull, pull up gas or fuel up for gas and then working out. That's my second least favorite mm. thing to do. I tried yeah. doing some push-ups the other day. It just wasn't good. No. Five was good, but uh, <laughs> I do have to head to the gas station later. So it's uh, really good that we have that information up because that's where I'm going to be headed to. I'm going to do a couple right now. Mix up your yeah. routine and go get some popcorn later. I'll yes, do this. Oh, that popcorn. too. I'm, I'm, I'll have to stretch, Mike. I'll stretch for that, but <laughs> no. To fill your car with popcorn. No, I was talking about the push-ups. No. So oh, you, that too. <laughs> do you work so, out? I mean, you guys 
I, I, no, I yeah. should. Oh, okay. But, uh, anyway, hi, different topic. <laughs> like, so you <laughs> actually go to the theater and get popcorn, and then yes. well, not just a bag of microwave popcorn. It's different. It's not the same. No, and then I, you know, I started this a long time ago. I, I had, I used to work in Waco. And I'd come home and see my family, and I would get on 35 and drive to Waco. But in San Marcos, there was a, a movie theater. I'm like, oh, that's going to be great. Nice. And so I'd walk in and buy my popcorn, and I'd keep on traveling. Load snacks. <laughs> icy. An icy. And an icy, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. I'm, it works. Sounds good to me. Hey, uh, if you are, I don't know if the buses are going to be stopping for popcorn this morning, but Aww. bundle up because it is definitely cold out there and it probably won't need a jacket later on today. Big warm up. We gain almost 30 degrees throughout the course of the day. Just a spectacular day. And that's kind of going to be the exception rather than the rule as far as these high temperatures in the 70s now through at least the, the next week. So love this picture. Very, very pretty tree with no leaves on it and that beautiful sunset in the background. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Got a lot of clear skies right now. Clear skies, dry air, light wind. That's why temperatures have continued to uh, drop down in a couple of spots. We're down to 47 right now. We lost three degrees in the past hour. 46 Rio Medina, 39 now at Hondo, 38 in Kerrville. And obviously in your backyard may actually be colder than that. Maybe getting close to a freezing as of right now. We still have another hour, hour and a half to cool off before the sun really gets high enough in the sky to, to warm things up. Very, very dry air. Of course, when that front moved through yesterday, it cleared out the humidity. Dew points are anywhere 30, 40 degrees lower than what they were at this time yesterday. So just a, a, how dry the air is and how moist it was yesterday. Now upstairs in the atmosphere, we do have a little bit of extra moisture and water vapor imagery. And so this is why throughout the course of the day, I think we're going to be seeing a few more high clouds moving on in here, which is what this computer model is sort of indicating later on today. And then those are going to be thickening up and we'll have a lot of clouds hanging around here tomorrow. This particular model has even a few showers trying to develop by dinner time tomorrow. Then overnight into Saturday, just a couple of these uh, light little showers around here. And that's going to be primarily through the first portion of the day Saturday because that clears on out then another front sweeps on through here. So that's going to provide beautiful weather on Sunday. Nice and cold again. Plenty of sunshine. So at least a good three quarters of the weekend. We're going to be seeing a lot of sunshine. Clouds come back in here Monday then and we have a chance for some rain overnight into Tuesday and pretty much first half of the day on Tuesday. This is um, I think a, maybe a little bit aggressive on Tuesday as far as the rain, but we will have some around here. It's going to be clearing on out by midday along with another front. So any little bit of warm up then on Monday, like I said, is going to be trimmed off by the next front around here. So upper level steering winds. There's the low which brought the front through yesterday. Somewhat cooler air, but primarily drier air. It's these Pacific fronts. These things are all coming in here pretty much straight west to east. And the next one moves through here. That gives us a little chance of rain that will then bring a front through then the next one right on the heels of that. So at least we've got this nice pattern going on here. That's the one that will bring us the chance of rain on Tuesday and yet another front in behind that. So again, we stay with January temperatures for the most part throughout the next seven days and even then some 66 today at noon, sunny skies. Today being one of the exceptions, though, 72 for a high temperature. Gorgeous day, though. It's going to be just fantastic with that dry air in place. And then over the next seven days, we have a chance of rain. A lot of clouds tomorrow, only 58 degrees. Mid 60s Saturday, rain first portion of the day Saturday. Scattered showers, not constant rain. Then clearing on out, gorgeous Sunday, chilly start. Warmer Monday, more clouds. Next front trims things off. So, how, how are winds looking Saturday? Uh, now it'll be windier on Sunday. Okay. In behind that front, so a okay. little bit breezier. So good to know. All right, thank you, Mike. You Six twenty. I am. Yes, he is. Six twenty-one. <laughs> Fifty degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, our Spurs finally snapped their five-game losing streak after they defeated the Nets. We're going to look to build on that momentum tomorrow night, and we're going to have a preview coming up. There's nothing like volunteering at the fire department. There's nothing like hitting the waves. But with my moderate to severe eczema, it hasn't always been easy. Since my skin was so irritated and itchy. And even worse, with all my gear on. Now, I'm staying ahead of my eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema. 
so adults can have long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from within is a powerful thing. Ask your eczema specialist how Dupixin can help heal your skin from within. And coming up on Good Morning America, new details on what investigators found in the apartment of accused Idaho murderer Brian Koberger. Now look for that story and more coming up at 7 a.m. right here on Case at 12. It's local day at the San Antonio Zoo. If you live in Bear County, you can get in for $8. Just bring proof of residency as a part of Dream Week. You can check out community performances, get resources, check out unique animal encounters, and more. The zoo is open today from 9 to 5. Our Spurs back in action tomorrow night. They're coming off a win against the Brooklyn Nets, and we'll look to keep that momentum going when they welcome the L.A. Clippers to town. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock tomorrow night over at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 625 and 50 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, apps like Venmo and Zelle have become popular ways to exchange money, but how do you know if your money is safe? We'll tell you what the experts think. And let's look out there at Trans Guide at Highway 90 at Medio Creek. We're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos there very soon. Outside with live. Ca oh, I love our commercial break. <laughs> they are a riot as we get closer to Friday. But it is still Thursday. Outside this morning, if you're just now waking up, it's about 6.30, 50 degrees, cooler as advertised. Good morning. It's Thursday the 19th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. And yes, it feels more like January. I mean, for the fans of cold weather out there. And I do want to point out before we zoom in, notice the boots. Oh. Two weeks away, a little more than back. two weeks away from the cattle drive. So you're getting ready the official kickoff of rodeo already. Ready, yes, so. half ready. <laughs> yeah, you need boots. You need a jacket this morning. Mike, would we ever wear boots with suits? Sure. At work? Would we, have you ever done that? I, I don't. A lot of people do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe um, we should I, do I, it in a, next month. All you right. think? Yeah, maybe. Okay. All right. Put it on the calendar. What? I need to get some dress boots first. You need to get dress <laughs> boots first, yeah. Anyway, uh, take a look outside. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. No glow of the uh, the sunrise as of yet, but we should be seeing it off there, kind of off to the uh, east in this shot a little bit later on. 47 degrees right now, dew point 23. Very, very dry air. We will continue to drop down a couple of more notches uh, before it's all said and done. No wind to speak of. Dry air, clear skies. Perfect situation for, as we call it, radiational cooling, allowing the coldest air to uh, settle down here to the surface because that's the heavy Air 38 Uvalde, 39 Hondo, 38 also in Kerrville. Some of the coldest spots out there. We're not down to where we should be, which is 41, but obviously we are closer to it. Mountain Cedar and Mold both went up from yes from the previous day's reading. Pardon me. And it's going to be interesting to see what Mountain Cedar looks like when the updated count comes out later on today, given the fact that we had those northwesterly winds all day yesterday. So clear, cold this morning, and then just mostly sunny, warm, beautiful. We are going to make it up to the low 70s today, not upper. 70s like yesterday and today's high going from today into the next seven days is going to be the exception rather than the rule. In other words, we're going to be getting back to basically January temperatures over the next seven days this weekend. Cool a few showers actually is going to be on the, the coolest high temperature tomorrow. Thanks to the cloud cover around here only in the upper 50s. A couple of showers late tomorrow night, early Saturday, and then that's going to clear out fairly quickly throughout the afternoon on Saturday, and that sets us up also for a good looking Sunday. Then going into next week, we'll start off a little warmer on Monday, but get cooler by uh, Tuesday and the middle part of next week with another rain chance. Not great rain chances. That's the one thing we're still still keeping our fingers crossed for. Anyway, details in the forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, had a few problems out there. Still got anything yeah, going on? You know, we solved this issue, Mike. Uh, US 90 at uh, Medio Creek. Let's get a quiet look at Transguide. You can see that we saw that stalled vehicle out there. Uh, been there for really quite a while, but it doesn't really be, seem to be impacting traffic. This is closer into 410, but remember, it's also the same spot where we had that stalled cab 
that was causing a little bit of a backup. Now what we are seeing there along 90 is the usual traffic, which is a lot of folks uh, or, or a lot of folks are making their way into the Alamo City, especially in those eastbound lanes. So just watch out there. Also watch out here. A crash picked up along I 10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard. Uh, this is causing a little bit of a buildup as you can see it right there behind me, but it's nothing too concerning, at least just yet. It is in the westbound lane, so if you're going up towards 1604 and I 10, be on the lookout. Now that wide look at the map is going to start to show a lot of slowdowns here in the next few minutes or so, so just be prepared for that. Uh, morning rush is upon us, so we want to make sure that you get to where you need to be on time, but of course safely, but just be prepared for some slowdowns. Let's get back to the shot again at US 90. That looks like be in the eastbound lanes, uh, not really impacting traffic, at least at this point, but I'm going to keep a close eye on it. Hopefully we'll have a better update in the next few minutes. Guys. Stephen, thank you so much. The morning routine, anything but normal for people who live in an apartment complex in far west Bear County. And they've had to find a way around a murder scene. Two men were shot to death. This is happening near Highway 90 and Highway 211 on a street called Mansions Bluff. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Good morning, Katrina. Well, good morning. Yeah, we are still waiting to hear more from investigators about this, but they say what they've learned so far is that this started with an argument and then there were the sound of gunshots. When deputies arrived, they did find two men dead here outside these apartments, the villages of of Briggs Ranch. This was about two o'clock this morning. Let me give you a look at the video. Uh, we were just being careful of, about what we can show here live. Uh, so they did find those two men outside the gates of this apartment complex. And again, they do believe this started with some sort of an argument. The, there were four people involved, as far as investigators know. Two of those are the two men who were killed. The other two were gone by the time deputies arrived. So at this point, they don't know who is responsible for the shootings, nor do they know exactly what that argument or disturbance was all about. But again, two men shot dead here early this morning. Reporting live in far west Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Two teens in the hospital after an overnight shooting on the city's southwest side. Alyssa Cole joins us live from the hospital where the victims are being treated. And Alyssa, what have you learned so far from police? Yes, Mark, Stephanie, good morning. Well, the good news is, is that those two teen boys that were shot, they're here at the Children's Hospital San Antonio where we're told they're going to be okay. But police say they're really going to have to do some digging once those kids are treated to find out who shot them. Now, the gunshot victims tell police they were walking down the street on Zarzamora near Walton Avenue when someone drove by and shot at, th shot at them. And apparently it happened nearby a convenience store in that area. Now one boy was shot in the finger and the other boy was shot in the foot. Now with such little information, police officers say it'll take them some time to investigate to find out who shot them and why and to find out other questions, answers to other questions like why were two boys out alone overnight walking down the street in that neighborhood. As soon as we get more details, we'll be sure to keep you updated in our later newscast and online at KSAT.com. Reporting outside of the Children's Hospital, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Right now it is 635, three years later, and police still trying to find the person who killed a man on the city's northeast side. It happened January 13th of 2020 on a street called Tranquil Dawn near Eisenhower. And that's where this man, 40-year-old Jesus Solis, was found dead with a gunshot wound. Now, right now, officers believe someone killed Solis after robbing him. If you know anything that can help police solve the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen. That's 210-224-STOP. Some drugs are off the streets in Crystal City following a couple of drug busts. Police there searched two homes yesterday and found narcotics. This is our first drug bust of the year. Crystal City Police also say they have seen an increase in human smuggling in that area. New this morning, we are working to learn more about an overnight fire on the northeast side. This happened around 1130 last night at a home on Forest Stream in Live Oak. The fire looked like it was coming from the garage. Right now, there's no word if anyone was hurt. We'll bring you updates as new information becomes available to us. We have learned another person is dead after a crash involving a dump truck. It's a story that we first told you about on Tuesday afternoon. So this was a scene along 1604 near Valero Way on the northwest side of town. The Bear County Medical Examiner says 25-year-old Jesus Garcia, the driver of that dump truck, has died. Now police tell us Garcia ignored a red light before hitting a car. The driver of that vehicle, 63-year-old John Hayes, died at the scene. 
And we're still working to learn more about a pedestrian who was struck by a vehicle. This happened around 10 p.m. last night near I-10 and Crossroads. That's in the Balcones Heights area. Crews had to block off two of the eastbound lanes of I-10. New details this morning on a deadly plane crash over in Yoakum. Four people were killed and another victim is recovering in the hospital. Now the church in Tennessee where the victims attended is posting updates about the survivor. Here's a look at the Facebook post from Harvest Church. They say, as of this evening, Kenan is resting and it seems that some of his pain is easing, for which we are incredibly grateful. An investigation is still underway. And new developments in the deadly shooting on the set of the Alec Baldwin movie Rust. Today is decision day for prosecutors. It means we're going to likely learn whether criminal charges will be filed for the fatal shooting of the movie cinematographer. ABC's Andrew Dembert has more. This morning, prosecutors are expected to announce whether charges will be filed in the movie set shooting involving Alec Baldwin, including whether Baldwin himself will be charged. The district attorney saying ahead of today's decision, the announcement will be a solemn occasion, made in a manner keeping with the office's commitment to upholding the integrity of the judicial process and respecting the victim's family. Were you in the room when the lady when someone I was, was the shot? The gun, yeah. Back in 2021, a prop gun Baldwin was holding discharged on the New Mexico set of Rust, killing cinematographers. Photographer Helena Hutchins and injuring the movie's director. Questions have surrounded how live ammunition made it into the prop gun and whether proper safety precautions were taken by crew members. Baldwin has insisted he never pulled the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. But according to an FBI forensic report obtained by ABC News, the gun could not have been fired without pulling the trigger. Meanwhile, an attorney for the movie's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, who was in charge of guns and ammunition on the set, has said she has no idea where the live round came from. Also central to the investigation is Seth Kenny, the supplier of the guns and ammunition, along with the film's assistant director, Dave Halls. According to the search warrant, Halls handed the gun to Baldwin while shouting cold gun, letting the crew know a gun with no live rounds was being used. Halls reportedly told investigators he didn't know there were any live rounds in the gun. There's no evidence that this was intentional. This was clearly an accident, but perhaps a criminal accident. Just because something is an accident doesn't mean that a criminal act didn't occur. The district attorney said additional live rounds were found on the set, but declined to say how many. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 639, 50 degrees. Zelle, Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, we all use them. And after the break, some things you can do to keep your money safe. 6.43, now to important news before you use a payment app this morning. Four major U.S. banks reported 192,000 cases of fraud from customers who used Zelle in 2021 and 2022. Out of all those cases, only about 3,500 customers received a reimbursement for the money they lost. Here's Nancy Alvarez with some advice to make sure you don't fall victim to scams. Tap and done. Payment apps like Zelle, Venmo, and Cash App make sending money to your friends or for purchases very easy and convenient. But is it safe? Yeah, I would say yes, because I know that there's a lot of fraudulent activity that's happening. Hearing people get hacked. According to Pew Research Center, about one in 10 people fall victim to payment app scams or hacking. While about 47% of people were able to get their money back with PayPal, very few people ever get their money back with other apps. With Venmo, only 14% get their money back, while it was a 3.7% with Cash App and less than 1% with Zelle. So how can you protect your money? First, only send money to people you know and trust. Also, double check to make sure the phone number or email address are correct. Connect your payment app to a credit card and not a bank account. Credit cards offer greater protections for authorized transactions than bank accounts. And finally, make sure you are the only one who can access the app by having a biometric passcode like a fingerprint. Helping you keep your money in your hands. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. Change the subject. I saw a customer using uh, writing a personal check at HEB the other day. Yeah. And you don't see those much anymore. But it was like she was using a thousand pennies to pay. Everybody was like, "Are you seeing this?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it, just so rare. It, you know? it takes a while. My, my mom still writes checks every once in a while. Do you still have a checkbook? 
I have it because I have uh, my hairdresser doesn't accept credit cards, yeah. and I have to find it because I don't use it all the time Same. when I see them. And I'm like, Same. and I'm like, oh my god, where is that? I think we all have a checkbook hidden somewhere. Yes. Stephen, definitely hidden somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I've tried to play it off, guys. I don't have a checkbook. <laughs> but it's okay. You no, know, I don't. Uh, but uh, check this out. We do have ten at Days of Allah. Pretty uh, interesting crash that's taking place here, and we, we say interesting because this is in the westbound lanes, but typically a lot of folks are making their way uh, into town in those eastbound lanes. And traffic's a little steady there, but where we're seeing more of that buildup is where people are going up towards 1604 in the northwest side. So watch out as you get your morning started. It does look like a few lanes are blocked off there, and really now at least like two lanes may be getting on by, maybe just one lane now that I'm getting the closer look at that transguide camera. But let's get you to the map, and this is where we see a little bit of that buildup taking place along the westbound lanes. As you approach UTSA Boulevard, I know that was the days of all the camera, but again, just be uh, watch out if you are driving toward the westbound lanes up toward UTSA Boulevard. Now, the wide look of the map does show that we are seeing slowdowns that are taking place at this time. US 90, of course, usual hotspot 35, another big one there as lots of folks are making their way into the Alamo City. But uh, just make sure that you also check in those gas prices like myself. I have to get some gas later. So just a quick reminder here in Bear County, the average gas price looks to be about two dollars and ninety seven cents. According to AAA, big jump here in Texas, $2.98 and same around the country more than uh, 20 cents than a month ago, $3.37. So just watch out there uh, again back as we get to 10 at Days of Allah. Uh, just not a pretty shot from trans guy, but we'll watch it closely. Yeah, it seemed like it was about what 30, 20, 30, 40 cents mm -hmm. lower. Yeah, it, it, ago, yeah. So. you know, when uh, AAA has this interesting information, you know, we'll look at it every morning and they talk about those 10 states, for instance, that have the biggest increase of the week and then those that have the lowest. So Texas has always kind of stayed in the middle. So we're seeing that big jump here, which is not necessarily something we want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to the whole check thing. It's funny how <laughs> bank accounts, though, like the check card mm -hmm. is still is still linked to a checking account. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Even though people don't write the physical Oh, I could have gone about this all day because sometimes when I need using a check, I need to mail it. And it's like, now where are the stamps? Whole other oh, dilemma. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. I anyway. keep them in the car. Just all right, so there are Great Danes and there are Greater Danes, especially in great pictures. Aww. Oh, I love that. Wow. Yep. I love that shot, and <laughs> perfect with the sun right over this one's head right there. A little bit of gray around the muzzle, seen a couple of years, but oh, absolutely beautiful. I bet that's the kind of dog that just kind of plops on the couch, looks at you, and is like, okay, give me a snack, do something, <laughs> change the channel. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, there's the glow of the uh, sunrise off to the uh, east there. Beautiful day, beautiful morning. 45 Balverde, New Braunfels, Converse, as well as uh, Port S.A., Canyon Lake. Very common number out there. Dry air, and as you saw, lots of clear skies out there. No wind to speak of, and so we've got uh, perfect radiational cooling, as we call it. Now, as you may have noticed in that uh, live cam that there were a couple of clouds out there, some high clouds. We do have a little bit of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. Not much. Usually if you see this almost a, a black on this this graphic or even kind of a tannish color, that means bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, but a little bit of extra moisture. So some of those high clouds are going to be hanging around here today and they will start to kind of fill in as the afternoon rolls on. We will drop down a few more degrees this morning. Bottom out at 44 almost down to a normal low temperature and then warm up quickly once the sun gets higher up in the sky. 66 at noon, 72 high temperature today. So we are going to be almost 10 degrees above normal. Again, a lot of high clouds and they kind of move on in here, sort of thicken up as the uh, evening rolls on. Now with the cloud cover tomorrow, that's going to keep us only in the upper 50s. And the other thing to, to take away from this graphic and now obviously this starts tomorrow, but we're going to be at the uh, 70s today as well, but only two of those on on the map and on the graphic, which is kind of the exception now rather than the rule, unlike what we've had almost every day up to this point so far this year with those above normal temperatures. Same thing with the lows normal right now being 41 degrees and we're going to be at or below normal for most mornings. Still very chilly tomorrow, but yeah, it's finally nice to see that we're going to be sort of back to uh, January temperatures around here. So the forecast today again, we make it up to 66 at noon. Lots of sunshine out there. A few clouds here and there and a high temperature today up to 72. Just a beautiful, beautiful day with a few of those high clouds. 
A lot of clouds tonight, tomorrow, and that combined with a little nudge of some cooler air keeps us at 58 degrees. So jackets going to be a pretty good idea pretty much all day long tomorrow. Clouds are going to really thicken up a couple of showers overnight into the first part of the day Saturday. Then we're going to be clearing out on Saturday. So if you got some outdoor plans in the afternoon, nice 64 degrees, beautiful on Sunday, and we will have I forgot to take that 30% off there on Sunday. I just now noticed that I apologize and we will have a um, chance for rain Saturday. What are you going to tell the boss? I'm lowering your grade now. But oh, thank you very much. Aww. And then another chance of rain late Monday into uh, into Tuesday. So oh, he That's doesn't like, listen to me anyway. Yeah. Uh, Six fifty forty. <laughs> Got and me. He fell for it. Six fifty forty nine degrees. The Dallas Zoo had someone intentionally damage enclosures that led to escape of one of their animals. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we speak with the San Antonio Zoo about the importance of keeping their endangered animals safe and how they protect them here at the zoo. And let's look out there with live cam. 49 degrees. We dropped a little bit. Really chilly out there. Go ahead and grab your jacket. We'll be right back. First there were angry words, then there were gunshots. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber in Far West Bear County. That is according to neighbors here at this apartment complex. We're not far from Highway 90 and Highway 211. The street is called Mansions Bluff. Now this happened about two o'clock this morning. Bear County deputies tell us that they got the call about a loud argument and followed by gunshots. When they arrived though, they found two men dead just outside the gates of the villages of Briggs Ranch apartment. Now, they say that they were told initially there were four people here, two of them dead, the other two got away. At this point, they don't know what the argument was about or who is responsible for the shootings. All of this still under investigation. Reporting from West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now, police are investigating the person responsible for shooting two teen boys on San Antonio's southwest side. Now, what happened on Zarzamora and Walton Avenue streets, and right now, those two teens are being treated here at the Children's Hospital. One was shot in the finger and the other in the foot. But the main questions are right now is who is responsible? Why were those teens walking alone overnight? And why did it happen in the first place? As soon as we get those answers, we'll be sure to update you in our later newscast. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Let's get a quick look here at 10 at Days of Ala. Better update. We did have a crash reported out there uh, that was causing a little bit of a slowdown for drivers, but you can see now those westbound lanes, even the eastbound lanes look pretty clear. Our map still picking up a little bit of a slowdown, but uh, nothing too bad. But really, slowdowns are going to be the big trend right now. You can see it there on our map. Usual hot spots. So just remember to drive safe. We'll keep you updated throughout Good Morning America. Look at live cam right now. Beautiful view. The sun is coming up there off to the east and just a few high wispy clouds. We've gone from 47 up to 51. I wonder if the wind picked up a little bit out there at the airport. Kind of unusual. Some 30s up there in the hill country and good looking day today. A lot of high clouds. 72 for a high temperature. Well above normal and more clouds than overnight. Tomorrow only 58. Some showers early Saturday and a good looking weekend. All right, welcome back January. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. GMA is next.